have rarely spoken that much about my own family, but too much because I always felt like it was better that they speak for themselves of their faith and their relationship with God than for me to mention it. But I was the first one in my family to get saved and you know, you look back on your childhood or you look back on life and some of us get maudlin and we blame our parents or our childhood for many things or we have a little more wisdom and we thank God for our childhood and our parents. Or we have other people look at how we were raised and say perhaps that we came from something that we didn't feel ourselves to be that way. I have been considered as coming from a broken home because my mother had too many boyfriends, I guess, or the man that she was with wasn't married to, and the man she had children with that are my sisters that look just like me, she never married. Or, yeah, she never married. He was married to someone else, and my mother was apparently the other woman. But my mother as a truck stop waitress was funny. She was hilarious. She was laughter epitomized. Tragedy working out in her life. Very obvious. And it seemed that she was always looking for love. And there was much in her life that I never got a chance to talk to her because most of the time I treated her as a friend as opposed to being a mother because as I grew up I was born she was the best father I ever had <laughs> but for a mother she was a good truck stop waitress <laughs> that's all I can say about it now my sisters have a different vision of that and they remember something different but you see I got saved after I graduated from high school I got saved in the summer that you know I was a graduate and and so when I got saved I was a Jesus fanatic and was running around just full of joy and full of love and God healed me of everything and I saw things in a different way and I reacted differently and I witnessed to everybody I could find and obnoxiously I treated my mother and my sisters with the hardcore facts of preaching it Jesus said, you know, and they got saved anyways. But you know, when you look back on life and you consider all that you've done and all that you could have done, and you think that God chose you, I hope you come to a conclusion like I do. I really do. Because, you see, as much as people like to sometimes think that I'm full of pride or I have some ego, <laughs> as much as they think that I don't care or that I care too much, and some see the man inside that Jesus has become in me, I often wonder, why me, Lord? And you know, when I do think about just why me, I'm just like you. I just find myself wrapping up in God's grace, sitting in His lap, seeing His face, just wanting to be held close, to just be held in God's arms. When my mother died, she dropped dead, literally. She was walking out to a barn, and feeding their horse, and like that, she dropped dead. 
Probably a brain aneurysm. We don't know. But I wasn't there, and I had always enjoyed conversations about God and about life and about things with her because we used to talk. It wasn't that we hugged or kissed or we said I love you very much, but I used to enjoy the conversations that I had with her. And it was hard for me for about a week. And then the miraculous happened, and I was looking far, far away, so to speak. And I was awake. And I saw my mother, <laughs> at least her face, her, maybe her shoulders on up. And she looked nothing like what she did here on earth, but she looked everything like she did here on earth. All the pain was gone. All the years and age had disappeared. When I saw her, I got an idea of why artists tried to come up with cherubim and cherubic faces to look so young. Because she didn't say a word, and I wasn't in heaven. She didn't need to. But what I saw in her face, what I saw on her face, was enough to know that that was where she belonged. I hope you and I find that out to be true too. Because age will take a lot from you, but it will give back some wisdom if you choose to use it in a positive way. There are days when I miss her but I would not have her back for anything in the world for what I saw in the glory of what I saw in her face. The peace, the contentment, the joy. So if you've lost a loved one, you didn't lose him. He just went home. Who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, our belief is in God's wisdom supposes and necessitates that he has a settled purpose and plan in the work of salvation. What would creation have been without his design? Is there a fish in the sea or a fowl in the air which has left a chance for its formation? No. But in every bone, every joint, and every muscle, in every sinew, every gland, and every blood vessel, you mark the very presence of a God working everything according to the design of his infinite wisdom. And shall God be present in creation, ruling over all and not in grace? Shall the new creation have the fickle genius of free will to preside over it when divine counsel rules the old creation? Look at providence. Look at his design. Look at his purpose for you. Who knoweth not that not a sparrow falls to the ground without your father knowing it? Even the hairs of your head are all numbered, and he counts them. God weighs the mountains of our grief and scales and the hills of our tribulation and balances. And shall there be a God in providence, in circumstance, and not in grace for you? Shall the shell be ordained by wisdom and the kernel be left to blind chance? No. He knows the end from the beginning. He sees in its appointed place not merely the cornerstone which he hath laid for fair colors in the blood of his dear son, but he beholds in their ordained position each of the chosen stones taken out of the quarry of nature and polished by his grace and hands. He sees the whole from corner to cornice, from base to roof, from foundation to pinnacle, from the highest to the lowest, and everything in between. He hath in his mind a clear knowledge of every stone which shall be laid in its prepared space, and how vast the edifice shall be, and when the top stone shall be brought forth with the shoutings of grace, grace unto it. At the last it shall be clearly seen that in every chosen vessel of mercy, Jehovah did as he willed with his own, and chose for them the way they should go. And that in every part of the work of grace he accomplished 
his purpose and glorified for his name's sake. You might miss your loved one because they went home. But can I tell you this? Soon and very soon, we're going home. And he's calling us home so soon. So very soon.